Welcome to episode 2 of Extreme Sports Performance TV, Profiling and Movement Screening. Before anyone starts any form of exercise or fitness training, it's a really good idea to ensure they are medically and physically able to do so to avoid any negative health or injury outcomes. The first thing we recommend starting with is a movement screening. This acts as a tool to help identify weaknesses and the symmetries of mobility and flexibility. We can assess the quality people move at within different categories and how well they can coordinate themselves. Once these movements are stable, we can then start to think about adding some form of resistance to them in order to obtain strength gains. They need to be carried out as naturally as possible to ensure they reflect the truest picture of an individual's ability. Therefore, it's important not to overthink technique. There are many exercises you could choose. We want to take you through the ones we find most useful when working with multi-sports athletes of different ages and abilities. Our standards and progressions range from level 1 to 5, with 1 being the easiest and 5 being the hardest. Level 1 consists of less tests which are easier to carry out, and level 5 has more tests which are harder to carry out. Squat, level 1, hands in front. Person performs squat with hands in front, parallel to shoulders, aiming for full depth with hips below knees, neutral spine alignment and neutral knee alignment. Squat, level 2 to 5, overhead stick. Person performs squat with stick directly overhead and arms fully locked out at the elbows, aiming for full depth with hips below knees, neutral spine alignment and neutral knee alignment, with stick staying in the same position throughout the movement. Hip hinge level 1, hand slide stiff leg deadlift. person stands fully upright with feet hip width apart. They slowly descend into a stiff leg deadlift, sliding hands from hips to knees whilst pushing bottom up and back. Throughout the movement, a neutral spine alignment should be maintained. Hip hinge, level two to five, stick stiff leg deadlift. person stands fully upright with feet hip width apart, they slowly descend into a stiff leg deadlift, sliding stick from hips to knees whilst pushing bottom up and back. Throughout the movement the neutral spine alignment should be maintained. Single leg level 1 squat to box. Person stands on one leg with hands held in front, parallel to shoulders. They slowly descend to touch the box behind them with bottom, immediately ascending after contact. The height of the box should initially allow a 120 degree angle, then progress to a 90 degree angle of working leg. Single leg level 2 to 5, squat on box. stands on box on one leg with hands held in front parallel to shoulders they slowly descend to touch their opposite foot to the floor immediately ascending after contact the height of the box should initially allow 120 degree knee angle then progress to 90 degree knee angle of working leg lunge level one hands in front forwards person stands fully upright with feet hip width apart, they then lunge forwards aiming to reach a 90 degree angle of both knees, 
at the lowest part of the descent where the position is held for three seconds before ascending. Hands should be held in front of shoulders throughout the movement. Lunge level two to five, stick forwards. person stands fully upright with feet hip width apart and stick held across shoulders. They then lunge forwards aiming to reach a 90 degree angle of both knees at lowest part of descent where the position is held for 3 seconds before ascending. Ankle level 3 to 5, knee to wall. person removes shoes and kneels down close to the wall with toe touching. Keeping foot flat they then touch knee to wall and return to the start position. The foot is then moved one inch further away from the wall and the test is repeated until the foot reaches a maximum distance of five inches away. Hip level three to five, Thomas test one, two, three and four. Person lays in a supine position on bench, table or box with tailbone on edge. Both knees are brought to chest. Fingers are interlocked over one knee to pull leg tightly into body with the other leg slowly released to hang naturally. Hamstrings level 3 to 5, posterior chain lift. Person lays in a supine position flat on floor. One straight leg is actively raised with ankle dorsiflect and knee extended until it cannot go any further or the opposite leg becomes active or causes the back to flex. Push level 1, 45 degree incline push up. Person begins movement in the 45 degree push up position with hands on a bench in line with chin under shoulders, feet are placed outside of hips, elbows should be kept in and shoulders should not elevate during movement. Push level 2 to 5, flat push up. Person begins movement in flat prone push up position with hands on floor in line with chin under shoulders. Feet are placed under hips, elbows should be kept in, and shoulders should not elevate during movement. Pull level 1, 45 degree incline row. Person begins movement in the 45 degree inverted row position with hands gripping secure bar over hand in line with chin under shoulders. Feet are placed under hips with legs locked straight and heels pressing into floor. Elbows should be kept in and chest should touch the bar with each movement. Pull level 2 to 5 flat supine row. Person begins movement in flat supine row position with hands gripping secure bar over hand in line with chin under shoulders. Feet are placed under hips with legs locked straight and heels pressing into floor. Elbows should be kept in and chest should touch the bar with each movement. Shoulder level 3 to 5 lift off.
person lays in a prone position flat on floor, a stick is held tightly overhead with hands shoulder width apart and wrists rigid. The stick is then raised slowly off the floor as high as possible, keeping nose in contact with the ground throughout. Shoulder level 3 to 5 rotation. Person holds stick tightly in one hand and places over shoulder on the same side as far down the upper back as possible. The opposite hand rotates behind the lower back holding stick tightly as close to the opposite hand as possible. It's important that the tests selected are relevant to the person being assessed and the needs analysis of the sport or activity. Doing all the tests is not always necessary. All tests are given a subjective score of 1 to 5, with 5 being the best and 1 being the worst. If someone has any pain at any point, they are given a 0 for that particular one and referred to a medical specialist. The best way to display the results is using a radar chart. This allows comparison scores to be displayed simultaneously over multiple points in time, e.g. pre versus post training program or individual versus team average when working with the team. The further out your plot lines sit, signify the better your score is for that particular area. Any poor scores or differences between left and right need to be addressed immediately to minimise imbalances. A movement screening may initially appear simple, but it is a very effective process. Here is an example of a radar chart result template for a level 4 movement screening. The athlete in this case was a professional volleyball player across a four week training program intervention. That's it for episode two of Extreme Sports Performance TV. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please comment below or get in touch with us directly and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can.